love this piece so far. I've actually sort of came up with the title before I actually made the piece, but it's um, Whale Grounds Girl instead of Girl Flies Whale. And it, it's sort of speaking a little bit about how in nature there's this sort of reverence and awe and, and it actually grounds us in a way looking at nature and being in awe and it actually humbles us a little bit which I think is not a bad thing. Humanity could do a little bit of that right now I think. If you scratch the surface deeply enough you'll find that we're not disconnected. <laughs> so that's what this painting was about. It's about you know the girl obviously being grounded by the whale and the connection. Hmm. I mixed up French ultramarine blue, uh, some burnt umber and some white and that kind of gives me that lovely blue grey. So I've just mixed up my colour here and I'm, I'm actually going to give this whale some volume through his snoot. I'm just scrubbing that in with a fairly dry brush. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll put some highlights over his shoulders and things to create the impression. Even though there's no water there, I'm going to pretend that he's underwater and I'll put some refraction on his shoulders and things. So I got, I got that uh, colour that I mixed up here and I've added a little bit of yellow to it and a little bit of white to that. I'm just going to start just sort of suggesting some kind of light play down on his shoulders like that. Or her shoulders. Just giving it a bit of volume. I've got these lovely barnacles all over them. So I'll just put some of them up there like that. And I'm just going to, I love the way whales have got these lovely, they've got these beautiful sort of frills on their neck, on their throat, where their throat opens up when they eat stuff. So I'm just going to play with them, and just sort of start suggesting them, they sort of splay out. And I'll just put a little bit of a highlight on the tops of those. Fin like that. So I've just mixed up some uh, phthalo blue and white and it's mainly white because phthalo blue is incredibly strong. So I'm just going to paint this this flipper at the back here. I actually think that's a bit too strong but anyway see how we go. Kind of get that out of the way it's sort of in the background anyway so I'm just going to get that out of the way. <laughs> let a little bit of that grain show through and I'll just mix it up a bit Got to create the illusion of some texture I'll do this one while I'm there
usually what I would do is paint this part of the picture with universal medium so that if I paint over it and make a mistake I can just wipe it off with unlocking formula but I didn't <laughs> I've added a little bit of white to that and I'm just going to bump up, oops, that's why you put the universal medium there <laughs> for moments like that. I'm just going to just bump up the front edge of that flipper like that. Same here. going to while I've got this just come down on the top edge of that as well and just give that a bit of volume like that because this part's closer I want to make it a little bit stronger with the white like So I just mixed up a bit of burnt umber and uh, French ultramarine blue and I'm just going to, in these flippers sometimes in their armpits, I don't know if whales have got armpits, but anyway, in their armpits there's quite often a lovely bit of that texture and that kind of whale colour. <laughs> They're actually quite beaten up whales. So I'll put a couple of scratches on him here and there. So I've just got some phthalo blue and some permanent alizarin and it makes a lovely deep rich dark kind of shadow color. It's kind of great when you put it over the top of other colors like that. You can see it starts to get some real meat. I'm just going to put that anywhere where I think there'll be a bit of a shadow. Quite strong around there. I'm just going to get rid of that eyeball patch for the moment. And I'll come back and bump all that up a bit later. But And that colour again is burnt umber and French ultramarine blue. It's a very good whale colour that one. And you'll see I'm following the brush strokes around like that and so the head helps create the volume. What I'm also going to do is there'd be a little bit of light bouncing off the side of the whale down here so I'm just going to suggest that with this now. And if it doesn't work, paint over it with a different colour.
one of the things I love about painting is looking f looking for all that reflected light and sometimes you find light down the sides of things that you wouldn't expect to so I kind of wanted to bounce a bit of light up there that could be bouncing back up off the bottom or from another light source over here but it just sort of allows you another opportunity to put a bit more color in and a bit more volume another excuse to stand in front of the easel for a bit longer so I've added a bit more uh, burnt umber and uh, French ultramarine together and I need a fairly solid color here because what I'm going to do is just start getting some of the details in so put that little jaw line in there like that and then it drops away here and I think we'll put his eye about there somewhere <laughs> Such crusty old things. <laughs> and this part of their chin is actually quite flat in some of them. I'm just going to run that out like that there. That's his little central line there. bellies are actually quite soft so I'm going to get some undulations in there and I might do that with the blue I think create the impression of that all wobbling even though he's not actually underwater he's in space but details so I've just gone back to my phthalo blue and white mix I'm just going to bump up some of these details here like that on the front edge of that Flopper. And I'm just going to kind of this part of his or her throat really comes forward, sort of thing. So I'm just going to bring it forward like that. seems to be a lump right there so I'll do that and another one there and sort of a high spot along this ridge through the middle here this one might have a bit of a paunch <laughs> good thing about working with acrylics is that you know every now and then you'll discover that you've missed something or put a brush stroke in the wrong place and you can just whack a brush stroke straight over the top so these ridges actually have they kind of got some shape to them so I'm just going to put a highlight down one edge of one like that Quite often they actually go down into these sort of shaded areas here so I'm just going to keep continue those ridges going through like that. You know a few little dots placed here and there and it creates the illusion of you know barnacles and all the little 
lumps and bumps they've got on them and scratches and usually got a few scratches on the snoot So I've made this blue here come down a little too far. So I'm just going to obliterate that. That's a good thing with having that very simple combination of phthalo blue and white. It means you can easily mix it up again to hide all your sins. So I've just got um, neat phthalo blue on my brush here and I'm just going to scrub it in strategically. I just want to kind of, because that's in shadow, it's got this. That blue is a really nice way of sort of creating the impression of, or you know, bump up the shadows a little bit, like that. Back here. And that's the great thing with, um, you know, painting these underwater scenes is actually quite lovely because if you want to move something further away, for example, if I want to move this fin further away, I just get that thalo blue, or that flipper, and just put a little bit of thalo blue over it, and it pushes it back into the background. Now the paint's a bit thin there, you can see how it's pulled the paint off the highlights in the uh, weave of the canvas, so I might have to lock that in with something. Make it more stable before I scratch into that again. So I've mixed up a little bit more white um, to my phthalo blue and I'm just, oops. Putting a few more highlights on here and there. It's, it, this part's actually literally, to a large degree, just building up the, the white really. So all the areas where this whale is sort of tilted up more towards the light, I'm just going to push up that white a bit like that. Here. Every now and then it's not a bad idea just to Get your brush and poke it against something to train it to stay flat if it tends to be a bit soft. And what I'm doing is I'm using this white line to sort of add to the illusion of those ripples in his or her belly. By following those kind of contours of the shadows you can kind of create highs and lows. Whack a few more 
battle scars. And a snoot. And while I've got that colour, even though it's quite blue, I'm just going to, here and there, just run it across the top of that. It'll, the blue will disappear out of it because there's only a little bit there, but it's just enough to put some highlights on things. And I'm just going to put a bit of a highlight there where the eye is and where the shoulder thickens out. And that kind of doing this here just gives that belly a little bit more volume. So what I'd normally do here is I would um, lock that in and then go back over it with a glaze, but I'm feeling a bit lazy. Um, and so I'm just gonna go in now with some blue, just neat blue like that. It's actually quite thin. And see if I can't do what I would have done with a glaze just with this brush. It is actually a glaze, it's just a little more refined application. And again, this is this part where by adding the blue like that, you just push things a little bit further away. And when you're doing this, this sort of glazes in here, it doesn't hurt just to follow the lines of the, the whale when you're doing it, because it just adds more texture. Gonna make it a little bluer in here. And also down here because there's a bit of a ridge there on them. I'm just going to whack a fairly strong blue on the bottom edge of that. Flipper like that. So I've gone back to my uh, burnt umber and French ultramarine blue colour and it's pretty much neat. There's no white or anything in there. And I just want to darken up the eyes a little bit like that. A little bit of detail in there and here and there. And just sort of bump up some of those lovely nodules that they've got on their snoot. Little ridge on his shoulder there too, where his nostril is. That lovely burnt umber colour combination is perfect. Put that there. And I don't know what this thing is on their neck. It's kind of all crusty and lumps and bumps on it. Just going to get rid of that line. 
fact, I, I, I'm not happy with that whole area there. It sort of comes in a little bit. So I've either got to thicken up his nose or eliminate a little bit of that through there. And I reckon I can eliminate a little bit of that because this color's nice and dark. Probably a bit of both is what I'll end up doing. I'll just push that back a bit like that. So I've just mixed up a bit more of that um, phthalo blue and white combination and I'm just going to paint some little marks on his. I don't know what those things are but they're all knotty and lumpy and barnacly. And they seem to have a patch on their throat of quite often of sort of collection of barnacles and lumps. <laughs> so it doesn't hurt just to like a few in here and there. And sometimes they continue down that center line. So I'm just going to bounce a little bit of starlight, this lovely starlight off our whale's shoulder. So I've got a very, very dry brush, and a bit of cad yellow there, and that's cad yellow light. And I'm just putting that on his shoulder like that and down over his back. Just for a bit of extra color. And what we might do just pinch a little bit of alizarin and do the same thing whoops just under here just to get a bit more color in there a little bit more depth and remain faithful to the whole warm to cool thing and I reckon our whale's almost done. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, there'll be a link in the description to some other whale painting footage that we've done somewhere. Um, make sure you like and subscribe. If you really want to become a member, uh, we want to say thank you very, very much to all of you members so far. Um, love your work and you help us get to do this all the time. So thank you. And just remember, be kind to the planet. It's the only one we've got.